scream waiting for content to arrive talking like a robot because I think that's what it would sound like. Alright, waiting to make sure that it's live before I start talking. I'm seeing my content. Your audience will see your content momentarily. Get ready. It's a little bit of a lag when doing this. That's why I always wait at the beginning. It's a little annoying, but whatever. Okay, here we go. I am now live. Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Um, this is a live first impressions video. I've been doing these lately. I started the fifth season by N.K. Jemison on audiobook uh, a few days ago. And today I'm like, well, should I do a first impressions on the audiobook or not? So I decided just to go ahead and do it just because, you know? Um, because I think this is one of those books that needs more exposure. Uh, generally. So this is the fifth season by N.K. Jemison. Um, the cover art is by Lorne Penapinito. Penapinto. Penapinto. Well anyway, she is the Orbit Creative Director, so this is an in-house uh, cover. I really like the cover. It's like a kind of like a, a stone fragment sculpture type thing. And the audiobook narrator is Robin Miles. Uh, so far, the narrator has been fantastic. Anyways, N.K. Jemison, the fifth season, this is her third trilogy, or third series, I believe. Uh, she wrote the Blood Moon books, which I should have looked up before I made this video, but I didn't because that's how... Yes, Dream Blood books. Okay, I've read The Killing Moon, the first Dream Blood book. Uh, I liked it, but it wasn't fantastic. And then she also wrote the Inheritance trilogy, um, starting with The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms. That is actually her first book, that first trilogy. The Inheritance Trilogy, those are her first books. And I need to read those still. And then she did the Dream Blood, and now she is on to the Broken Earth uh, series or trilogy. I'm not sure what it's going to be, to be honest. And this is the first book in that new series. You don't have to read the other series to know anything about this. She writes things that are independent from each other. Uh, here is the hard sell on Goodreads, the summary. This is the way the world ends. Again, three terrible things happened in a single day. Essen, a woman living an ordinary life in a small town, comes home to find that her husband has brutally murdered their son and kidnapped their daughter. Meanwhile, Mighty Sands, the world spanning empire whose innovations have been civilization's bedrock for a thousand years, collapses as most of its citizens are murdered to serve a madman's revenge. And most and worst of all, across the heart of the vast continent known as the stillness, a great red rift has been torn into the heart of the earth, spewing ash enough to darken the sky for years or centuries. Now, as soon, must pursue the wreckage of her family through a deadly dying land, without sunlight, clean water, or arable land, and with limited stockpiles of supplies, there will be war all across the stillness, a battle royale of nations, not for power or territory, but simply for the basic resources necessary to get through the long, dark night. As soon does not care if the world falls apart around here, she'll She'll break it herself if she must to save her daughter. Ooh, what a sell. Fantastic. That is the best summary that I've read on Goodreads in a long time. That was fantastic. And then on the front of the book, it says, One of the most celebrated new voices in epic fantasy, Miss N.K. Jemison. 
and I agree. I, I like her. So let's go ahead and check out the Audible sample of the book to uh, get people's idea of what the book is like and how it is read. All right, let's see if there's an Audible sample here. You know what? There might not be a sample. I could be wrong. Well, how about if I go to the Audible website instead of the Goodreads website? Are there samples there? Let's check it out. Yes, here's a sample for the fifth season by N.K. Jemison, narrated by Robin Miles. Bossing. Detailing its people's long and brutal history. The clumping masses of its buildings are punctuated by great high towers like fingers of stone, hand-wrought lanterns powered by the modern marvel of hydroelectricity, delicately arching bridges woven of glass and audacity, and architectural structures called balconies that are so simple yet so breathtakingly foolish that no one has ever built them before in written history. But much of history is unwritten. Remember this. Much of history the streets written. are paved oh. not with easy-to-replace cobbles, but with a smooth, unbroken, and miraculous substance the locals have dubbed asphalt. Even the shanties of Eumenes are daring, because they're just thin-walled shacks that would blow over in a bad windstorm, let alone a shake. Yet they stand as they have stood for generations. At the core of the city are many tall buildings, so it is perhaps unsurprising that one of them is larger and more daring than all the rest combined. A massive structure, whose base is a star pyramid of precision-carved obsidian brick. Pyramids are the most stable architectural form, Pyramids. and this one is pyramids times five because why not? Why not, right? And because this is Eumenes, a vast geodesic sphere whose faceted walls resemble translucent amber sits at the pyramid's apex, seeming to balance there lightly. Though in truth, every part of the structure is channeled toward the sole purpose of supporting it. This is the it looks part precarious. Of the that is all that matters. The Black Star is where the leaders of the Empire meet to do their leaderish things. The Amber Sphere is where they keep their Emperor carefully preserved and perfect. He wanders its golden halls in genteel despair, doing what he is told, and dreading the day his masters decide that his daughter makes a better ornament. None of these places or people matter, by the way. I simply point them out for context. But here is a man who will matter a great deal. Ooh, who's this guy? You can imagine how he looks for now. You may also imagine what he's thinking. This might be wrong, mere conjecture, but a certain amount of likelihood applies nevertheless. Based on his subsequent actions... There are only a few thoughts that could be in his mind in this moment. He stands on a hill, not far from the Black Star's obsidian walls. From here he can see most of the city, smell its smoke, get lost in its gabble. There's a group of young women walking along one of the asphalt paths below. The hill is in a park much beloved by the city's residents. Keep green land within the walls, advises Stonelore. But in most communities, the land is fallow planted with legumes and other soil-enriching crops. Only in Eumenes is Greenland sculpted yes. into prettiness. The women laugh at something one of them has said, and the sound wafts up to the man on a passing breeze. He closes his eyes and savors the faint tremolo of their voices, the fainter reverberation of their footsteps, like the wingbeats of butterflies against his sesapine. He can't cess all seven million residents of the city, mind you. He's good, but not that good. Most of them, though, yes, they are there, here, 
Looks like a god. Of some sort. He breathes deeply and becomes a fixture of the earth. They tread upon the filaments of his nerves. Their voices stir the fine hairs of his skin. Their breaths ripple the air he draws into his lungs. They are on him. They are in him. Guy's like connected. But he knows that Everything. he is not and never will be one of them. Never. Did you know, he says conversationally, that the first stone lore was actually written in stone? so that it couldn't be changed to suit fashion or politics, so it wouldn't wear away. Word. I know, says his companion. Hm. Yes, you were probably there when it was first set down, I forget. He sighs, watching the women walk out of sight. It's safe to love you. You won't fail me. You won't die. And I know the price up front. All right, guys, that is the sample audiobook narrated by Robin Mills for the fifth season by N.K. Jemison. Um, I've already read about three chapters of this book, uh, listening to it, and my first impressions of this book is that it's very imaginative. This is a world unlike any other world that you have ever read. It is completely different from Earth. It's on like a different planet completely. And there's a lot of issues with earthquakes, volcanoes, and the plates moving, uh, tsunamis, weather issues, things like that. And the world actually ends multiple times from these different... Uh, cataclysmic events but you know life still prospers and comes back but it's like a cycle almost but at the beginning they're saying that this might be the last time this might actually be the one that kills all of life and so at the beginning this guy uh, I believe he's like a god and he creates this earthquake uh, and the uh, tectonic plates to split and so the entire middle of this world like the equator is now this huge ravine and uh, crevice and there's a bunch of magma that's filled into the crevice and this is uh, just really imaginative and there's a ton of earthquakes and now ash is being thrown into the air from the volcanoes and it's going to be killing a lot of, of the food sources in this world. And it's just a very interesting setting to even start this book. The world building is off the charts on this book. If you get the audiobook, make sure you read the PDF file so you can read the glossary. Because the glossary is important. Anyways, uh, the big thing about this book that really captured my interest is that there is a character that is told in second person so you are actually that character and so it talks about you doing this you doing that and it's very different uh, it's 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 been difficult for me to understand what is happening around this character because everything is in second person but it's done really well and I really like it a lot um, but, of course, I just started the book, so hopefully it, it stays good in that respect. Uh, so you are this woman that just that your young child was murdered by your husband, and more than likely your husband also uh, did something to your daughter a long time ago. Now, you are this woman with the ability to control like the earthquakes and the, the earth around you and the weather and things. And so other people are very scared of you. And your little son that was killed, he was one of those people as well. He was able to create like earthquakes and little crevices and stuff. And it's just natural for these type of people to be able to do the, the, these things. And But there is a lot of prejudice against your type of people because everything that goes wrong everything is blamed on your people so with this huge 
cataclysmic event happening with the earthquakes and the ash in there, um, these type of people are going to be tracked down and probably killed or at least being highly prejudiced against. So you are now going out and you're going to go try to find your husband to kill him because he killed your son. Uh, it was a form of like domestic abuse and he was and he killed your son and now you're going out to find him to seek revenge. And it's very interesting because it's in the, it's in this second uh, person narration. But then there's this other part of the book and it's in third person narration and it talks about this young uh, girl that also is one of these people that can control the earthquakes and the earth and stuff like that. And she was pretty much put aside into like a barn and lived like an animal. And she is now being sent away to this specific kind of like a school to train and to to find out who she is uh, her powers and stuff so that she doesn't hurt other people and this book is just very fascinating as far as world building um, and Kane Jemison does this thing where she uses uh, very imaginative words to describe things that we already have words for in English and for some people that doesn't work, uh, for me, I'm like half and half on it. So when, you know, she talks about a volcano in this book, but she doesn't use the word volcano. She'll use a different word completely. Uh, like a, I think it says it's like a blow or something. And then she talks about cities, little towns as comms, uh, C-O-M-M-S. And then she talks about she gives odd names to different places in the world like this entire world is called the stillness and a lot of these things we have words for in our English language but because she has this really unique fantasy world she is using these really different words to describe this world and there is a learning curve with that and definitely the glossary helps um, I'm enjoying it so far. I think it's great. I think Robin Miles is a great uh, audiobook narrator. Uh, I think she sounds amazing, and I can understand her really well and at, at a higher speed. And I think people should check this out. Um, the fifth season, The Broken Earth, uh, number one, by N.K. Jemison. A lot of people that I highly respect and a lot of people that I watch on BookTube that read their reviews online... Uh, they love this book, and I am so happy to have to finally be reading it now. I got this so long ago, and I'm finally listening to the audiobook, and I like it so far. It's a little bit difficult audiobook-wise to get the terminology straight, but other than that, I'm having a great time. Okay, so those are my first impressions of the fifth season by N.K. Jemison. If you watched this video, thank you so much. Um, if you like this type of video, let me know. Uh, give me a thumbs up. And if you read this or you're thinking about reading this, uh, what do you think about this book? What do you think? Um, thanks for watching.